Disney World food can be a magical experience. You can bite into that perfect juicy cut of steak, you can sample dishes from around the world, or indulge in desserts you'll be dreaming about for decades. But Disney World food can also be overpriced and underwhelming. Instead of getting tasty treats and to die for dishes, you could be served buyer's regret and disappointment. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and I've eaten at the worst Disney World restaurant so you don't have to. Now, there may be some restaurants in this list that you love, and that's cool. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'll be clear with every entry why these restaurants aren't for everyone and in what circumstances you might want to potentially skip them in favor of something better for your particular needs. I've eaten at all of these. Most of the time, I've had a decent meal. But not every restaurant works for everyone, so we're going to be clear about what maybe you want to think twice about with these guys. And fear not, I won't leave you hanging. I will share suggestions for the restaurants that could replace these in your list as well. So we got your back. Let's get started. The first category we're going to talk about is the worst restaurant for families, and I'm going to call on STK Orlando for this one. STK Orlando is an ultra-modern steakhouse located in the Landing District of Disney Springs, and you're going to find the atmosphere here to be very Vegas-like. We've got the black and white decor alongside the neon pink mood lighting, the stylish second-story terrace, which is very, very nice in the evening, but can get a little too hot to sit on during the day, and the intense musical stylings of the STK DJ. Now, the DJ does an excellent job throwing out a combo of recent jams with old school hits, but these beats can get really loud and make it hard to focus on a conversation with your travel party. So if you're not looking to hardcore vibe to some tunes while you're noshing on a steak, then this may not be the steakhouse for you. It's a great date night restaurant, but maybe not for your like toddler. Now the party vibes here aren't the only potential deterrent. The place is also super expensive. Yeah, yeah, I know. Disney World is expensive, period. I got you. But I'm talking about $18 for a helping of mac and cheese. And the steaks here are decent, but you're paying a lot for a steak that's decent. So let me give you a quick price comparison here. If you order a 10 ounce filet at STK, you're looking to pay $67. If you decide to dine at Steakhouse 71, located at Disney's Contemporary Resort around dinner time, you can order a 10 ounce New York strip from their Steakhouse Cuts menu for $34. And that's a nice cut of meat they're giving you. So even the steaks over at my favorite steakhouse on property, La Cellier at Epcot, are cheaper. And they're in a park. La Cellier steak prices range from $52 to $59, while their range for STK starts at $50 three for a small steak. Medium steaks range in the price between 64 and 104, and large steaks cost around 115 to 157. Now, if you're someone who likes a hip happen and party like Vegas atmosphere with your dinner, then you may still get a kick out of dining here. It is good food. But if you'd rather pay less for a better quality steak and all around meal, as well as enjoy a more quiet atmosphere where you can have a conversation with the person next to you without shouting over some DJ tunes, then Steakhouse 71 in La Cellier might provide you with an overall better dining experience. Next on our list is worst for those who want an upscale experience with their upscale price tag. And here we're going to call on Rainforest Cafe and T-Rex Cafe. Now, one restaurant has an active volcano on its roof. The other has dino bones greeting you up front. These Disney Springs restaurants are highly misleading because they look so cool. And they are so cool. Rainforest Cafe sits you down in the middle of a rainforest surrounding you with animatronic animals like gorillas, elephants, and boa constrictors. Every now and then a thunderstorm starts up and the restaurant flashes with light and the animals all go wild responding to it. Meanwhile, T-Rex has a similar vibe since it's owned by the same company, Landry's Inc. Just replace the rainforest animals with dinos and woolly mammoths. Now, these restaurants aren't the worst because of their theming by any means. Actually, if one of your main goals is to find a fun atmosphere to dine in and keep the kids engaged and entertained, these are great restaurants to choose. What makes them one of the worst, however, is the fact that you're going to wind up paying a lot of money for that atmosphere and the food is going to be really mediocre and not all that innovative. For example, let's look at their burger options real quick. You can order an OK barbecue bacon cheeseburger at Rainforest Cafe for $18.99, right? If you're there for the fun atmosphere, that might not be such a bad splurge. But if you're looking for a really, really good burger, then you're missing out on Deluxe Burger, which is also located in the Disney Springs area. Deluxe Burger specializes in burgers. I mean, I sure hope they do. It's in their name. They've even got their own barbecued burger that's priced at $12.49. Instead, it's a better quality burger, a better price range. You still get fries. You still get fry sauces, which I don't think you get at T-Rex or Rainforest. So it's just a better spend of the money. 
Now, I think this might be a good time to also shout out a couple of my favorite burgers on property, like Gibson Sandwich King award-winning burger that can be found in Disney Springs over at the Boathouse. It's topped with cherry peppers, jalapeno Havarti, spicy mayo, lettuce, tomato, and onion. Super juicy, super good, very worth it. But our new favorite takes us out of Disney Springs and over to Disney's Contemporary Resort on the Steakhouse 71 lunch and lounge menu. You can order the Steakhouse 71 stack burger, which is pure cheesy, cheesy goodness. I am not kidding. Just look at that beautiful melty cheese. It's like this burger was made for us. But that's the general problem with restaurants like Rainforest Cafe and T-Rex. They offer a range of options and fail to have any standouts on their menus. Jacks of all trades, masters of none. Afraid you're going to miss out on all the fun Rainforest atmosphere if you choose another location to dine? Then be comforted by the fact that Rainforest Cafe is a chain restaurant with over 20 other locations around the world, including a second location in Disney World right outside Animal Kingdom. T-Rex used to have multiple locations too, but it seems for now the Disney Springs location is the only one still alive and kicking. So if you've got a kid who really, really, really loves dinosaurs, this still is going to be probably a good investment for you. Mediocre menu and all. If you're trying to appeal to the kids' attention spans and entertain them with a fun-filled dining experience, then you might want to consider some character dining options instead. Garden Grill at the Land Pavilion in Epcot, is that all you care to enjoy? Restaurant that slowly rotates over scenes from living with the land down below? There you'll be able to meet Farmer Mickey Mouse, Chip and Dale, Pluto, and you can also nosh on some really, really great food including harvest-inspired vegetables grown right there at the land. Or maybe you'd rather try Chef Mickey's at Disney's Contemporary Resort. I can't imagine why. This is another all-you-care-to-enjoy meal that you can hit up for breakfast or dinner, but breakfast is going to be cheaper. Just a heads up, it usually is. And here you can dine on some famous dishes like those prime rib or nice and pillowy potato gnocchi. They've got the cheesy potatoes for breakfast. And you can eat the Fab Five, Mickey, Minnie, Pluto, Goofy, and Donald in their chef attire. So all those restaurants that you're going to go to specifically for your kids are going to be very, very expensive. Disney knows where their bread is buttered. But if you want to have good food with it, too, then maybe don't choose T-Rex or Rainforest. Okay, next on our list is worst because you can get this stuff at home. And that's Lotus Blossom Cafe. It's over in Epcot. Now, Epcot is my favorite park to dine in. There are so many unique eats here from their World Showcase restaurants to their festival booths, of course. I could eat something new here every time and find a new favorite. But Epcot isn't immune to substandard dining experiences. If you make your way to the China Pavilion, you're going to find Lotus Blossom Cafe. It's a beautiful name for a quick service restaurant, but this food is not going to rock your world. The offerings here are super basic and they reflect your typical Americanized Chinese fast food restaurants. But if that's something you love and you're not feeling like venturing outside your comfort zone, then Lotus Blossom can hook you up with orange chicken, fried rice, veggie curry, along with other takeout goodies. Don't worry, I'm not just throwing the China Pavilion under the bus here. They've got some great offerings that you can try instead of Lotus Blossom for unique flavors and creative dishes. The Joy of Tea Kiosk is one of the few places on Disney property that serves boba tea. They've also got some fun cocktails like the Tipsy Ducks in Love. This is my favorite name for a drink ever, probably. Probably. The Tipsy Ducks in Love is made with bourbon, black tea, coffee, cream, and chocolate. So bourbon, tea, coffee, chocolate, what could possibly go wrong? It's actually really good. And there aren't a whole lot of food offerings here at the moment, but when they do have food offerings here, I think there's some pork egg rolls there right now. In the past, they've had those wonderful chicken curry pockets. They're actually pretty good. So if you're looking for a more substantial array of Chinese food, though, the China Pavilion has the Nine Dragons restaurant. Now, this menu features Cantonese, Mongolian, Szechuan, Hunan dishes, plus the overall look of the restaurant is gorgeous. Reservations are usually pretty easy to snack for this location because again this is still americanized chinese food it's not all that authentic but it does tend to go a little under the radar people don't necessarily love it but i will say they've got a really killer spinach noodle here Outside of the Epcot Park, you can dine at Morimoto Asia in Disney Springs. Now, this serves up a full menu of high-quality Pan-Asian cuisine. If you're not looking for a sit-down restaurant and would prefer something quicker, Morimoto Asia's still got you covered with their outdoor quick service option, Morimoto Asia Street Food. The quick service offers up a very limited yet still tasty selection of the same bites from the table service restaurant like ginger chicken ramen and the Morimoto baby ribs that are super, super famous and takoyaki. Now, Disney's Animal Kingdom also has a table service restaurant with Pan-Asian inspired options. Yak and Yeti is a Nepalese style restaurant with an array of options for noodles and bowls, wok, grilled meat and veggies, and more. They've even got a shareable section with lettuce wraps, ahi tuna nachos, and Korean fried chicken. Okay, now this next category is the worst restaurants from a value for money perspective. Now, there's a couple in here that I think some of you are going to disagree with me on, but hear me out. First up is going to be Tony's Town Square. So if you've ever been wandering 
wandering around Magic Kingdom and thought I could really go for some Olive Garden right now, then this restaurant won't be the one of the worst for you. And listen, I love an Olive Garden. No problem. I don't necessarily want to eat there when I'm in Disney World and there's so many other options. Tony's Town Square restaurant is themed around Lady and the Tramp and it's located at the front right side of Main Street USA when you enter the park. And during our last visit to Tony's, because don't get me wrong, I go there all the time because I want to keep giving those restaurants a second and third and fourth chance to be really good. But our meal was on the overly salted side of things. The shrimp fettuccine Alfredo was very salty. The scampi pasta, very salty. We also got a mushroom ravioli that was just sort of weird. The texture of the mushroom was just not not great. It was almost like a pate. It just wasn't working. And I love Italian food. Like I said, I'm a big Olive Garden fan, but this just was not hitting the spot. Now, the Lady and the Tramp statue in the main dining area makes a great photo op. If you're looking for a last minute table service restaurant for a sit down meal, maybe you're there during a busy, busy time. Maybe you weren't able to get a sit down meal and you're just starving then this is going to provide you with a simple Italian meal. But if you're a ginormous fan of Italian food or just stellar food at that price in general, this is not going to be it. And it isn't necessarily cheap either. So after many, many meals at Tony's, they've been fine, but they've been nothing to write home about. And there's better stuff elsewhere. So the Plaza Restaurant, which is also located at Main Street USA, that's going to provide you with fairly easy reservations, cute and cozy atmosphere vibes and AC just like Tony's, but it'll give you probably better quality food at a more affordable cost. If you visit the Plaza Restaurant during a 50th anniversary celebration, you can also order a crisp, sweet, and savory Monte Cristo, which just so happens to be one of my favorite things to eat and one of my favorite new offerings in Disney World. Otherwise, the menu features an array of comfort foods like homestyle meatloaf and the Plaza Club sandwich. Right next door is its partner in crime dessert shop, the Main Street Ice Cream Parlor, where I've been known to order extra peanut butter sauce to drizzle on top of those dreamy ice cream sundaes. But what about Italian food? Sure, Tony's Town Square is the only Italian restaurant in Magic Kingdom, and if you're craving Italian food right then and there, it'll be your only option. But if you can hold out just a little bit longer, you can find an Italian restaurant that's A, a hidden gem, and B, gives other Italian restaurants a run for their money. Il Molino is located in Walt Disney World's Swan Hotel, and it serves traditional dinners from the Abruzzi region of Italy. This place is classy with a capital C, very clean, rustic. You walk in, and you just feel like you've been welcomed home. They've got super buttery spaghetti carbonara, a delicious gnocchi bolognese, And for a flavorful, low-carb option, you've got the Polo Fra Diavolo, which is chicken, sausage, vegetables, and spicy tomato sauce. It's delicious. And guess what else? All these plates salted just the right amount. Hallelujah. But seriously, I can recommend El Molino. Over the top, I love it. Okay, another one in our category of value for money is a problem is Pizza Rizzo and Pizza Fari. Yep, I'm grouping these two pizza places together because they're guilty of the same crime, which you guys know if you follow this channel, that pillowy, greasy, subpar pizza pizza that you're most likely regret eating after a few thrill rides. Pizza Rizzo is a quick service restaurant in Disney's Hollywood Studios, close to the Muppet Vision 3D Theater. And because this is the recurring theme of my video, I have to mention that the food here might not be great, but the theming is adorable. Thanks for tricking us like that, Imagineers. Happens all the time. This pizza joint is owned and operated by the Muppets' very own Rizzo the Rat, aka the rodent who, spoiler alert, tries to impersonate Mickey Mouse in the Muppet Vision 3D pre-show. So because it's a Muppets-themed restaurant, it, of course, doesn't take itself very seriously. So expect to see a lot of funny signs and quirky quotes throughout the restaurant. I love it. And then there's Pizza Fari, which is located between the Africa and Pandora sections of Am- Animal Kingdom. The theming there is vibrant with multiple dining rooms. Each dining room is covered in a brightly colored mural. They depict groups of animals with common themes. This is really cool, by the way. One room has animals using camouflage. Another room has animals who carry their homes on their backs. The third room has animals that enjoy hanging upside down. And the final dining room features our nocturnal animal friends. Honestly, it'd be great if you could just come here for the artwork alone. It's like a mini art museum. Alas, the theming for both restaurants is deceiving because those pizzas, yeah, hard pass. There's just so much dough and grease to them. So even when they have different toppings like pepperoni and sausage, most of the time, it's just going to be some of the worst pizza you've had. Kids are going to love it. They don't care if it's bad pizza. They still love it. But if you're looking for a better quick service pizza option that might make everyone in your travel party happy, then you may want to try Blaze over at Disney Springs. Now, the one thing I do have to say against Blaze is just like Rainforest Cafe and Lotus Blossom Cafe, it's food you can get at home. Blaze is a chain restaurant, so you're not going to find food unique to the Disney property there. But that being said, the pizza at Blaze is quick, customizable, affordable, and brick fired. And the flavors come through a lot more on these personal pan pizzas rather than those infamous pillowy pizzas, but maybe a better, cheaper meal option for you and your group. 
And let's not forget Pizza Ponte, a quick service pizza place that's also located in Disney Springs at the landing section of the shopping district. They specialize in pizza, but they also have a small selection of Italian inspired sandwiches and pastries you can choose from too. Next in our list of restaurants that are the worst because of value for money is Big River Grill and Brewing Works. At the beginning of this year, we looked over some Yelp reviews for Disney World restaurants just for fun. And some of the reviews were nice, some were hysterical, and some were downright scathing. One restaurant we noticed that had concerning reviews was Disney's Boardwalk Inn's Micro Pub, Big River Grill and Brewing Works. 367 reviewers on Yelp rated Big River Grill and Brewing Works at 2.5 out of 5. Okay, now you're curious about all these Yelp ratings, right? I've got a video with more if you want to check it out. Unfortunately, our previous experiences with Big River Grill and Brewing Works kind of align with these rankings. The food is definitely nothing to write home about. The atmosphere isn't really living up to those Disney immersion standards, and you wind up with a horrible case of FOMO after realizing you ate here instead of one of the other awesome restaurants close by, like Yachtsman Steakhouse or Beaches and Cream. Both restaurants are delicious, well-themed, and are within walking distance of Big River Grill. Now, if you're on the search for a casual sit-down restaurant with those micro pub vibes and you're in the boardwalk area, you may still enjoy the drinks and brewery atmosphere, but this certainly isn't a place you need to go out of your way to experience. If you got to pick a sports bar to go out of your way to experience, then Rick's Sports Bar and Grill at Disney's Coronado Springs might have a better selection of food and a ton of TVs to watch a sports game or two, if you've got the time. But you don't really have to go that far for a decent beer. Baseline Tap House at Disney's Hollywood Studios is a nice little counter service restaurant that has an array of beers on tap, as well as tasty charcuterie boards and ginormous pretzels to complement your drink. Even closer to you, though, if we're still under the impression that you're standing at the doors of Big River Grill trying to decide whether you should go in or not is the Rosen Crown Pub and Dining Room at Epcot in the UK Pavilion. Just walk on through the gates of the International Gateway and turn left. This table service restaurant serves up a ton of British comfort food like fish and chips, bangers and mash, and sticky toffee pudding. Oh, and beer. Can't forget the beer. Next in our category of value for money is going to be Planet Hollywood. I want to like Planet Hollywood at Disney Springs. I want to like it so badly because it looks so cool. Planet Hollywood looks like an old-fashioned observatory and holds a lot of movie memorabilia inside its restaurant. I'm talking movie props, costumes, classic film scenes playing out on the big screen. But the food is overpriced and underwhelming. The atmosphere is loud, like so loud you got to shout at your neighbor to have a conversation. And... It's just sort of blot as an experience. And that's a real shame because the food has some fun concepts like the high roller sampler that brings out your appetizers on a Ferris wheel like contraption or the bacon mac and cheeseburger, which is pretty self-explanatory and sounds tastier than it is. But time and time again, we've given Planet Hollywood another chance and in exchange, it's presented us with bland mac and cheese, soggy burger buns, undersauce barbecue ribs, and literally dirty plates and cups. So if you've got a big movie buff in your family, then Planet Hollywood may still be worth a visit. Their menu does serve up a variety of different options, much like the menus over at Rainforest Cafe and T-Rex Cafe. So if you want to take your cinephile party member to check out all the movie memorabilia, then by all means, don't let me stop you. However, if you're looking for lots better food that's actually worth the price, you might want to hit up the Chicken Guy Quick Service, which is literally neighbors with Planet Hollywood. Now, Planet Hollywood and Chicken Guy both have something in common. They are run by the same restaurant group, and Guy Fieri has been kept busy in Disney Springs because he not only created a specialty burger and sandwich menu for Planet Hollywood, but he also owns Chicken Guy with restaurateur Robert Earl. Now, why is Chicken Guy awesome and Planet Hollywood is not awesome? I cannot answer that question for you. All I can do is let you know this has been my experience. <laughs> chicken Guy offers a selection of chicken tenders you can pair with your choice of 22 different specialty sauces. It's quick, it's easy, it's reliable, it's always good, and it's great for those with picky eaters. You know what other Disney Springs location has great fried chicken too? Along with some of the best homestyle cooking ever? That's Chef Art Smith's Homecoming. If you're looking for a restaurant that's going to serve up the flavors, Homecoming's table service restaurant will provide. Along with Art's famous fried chicken, you can also order comfort food like the catfish sandwich, char-grilled chicken, and the chicken and donuts. But that's usually just for brunch. Though the high roller sampler is a swing and a miss at Planet Hollywood, Homecoming's kitchen plate makes things better again by providing its guests with a sampling of three different house-made sides, in case you're feeling indecisive. Cheddar cheese drop biscuits, French green beans, creamy mashed potatoes, mama's mac and cheese. You really can't go wrong over there. 
All right, next on our list is one of the worst because it's never open, and when it is open, it's boring, and that's Tortuga Tavern. Tortuga Tavern is located in the Adventureland area of Magic Kingdom. It's like a shifty ex-partner, like it kind of wants to be there for you, but it'd rather just not unless it's convenient for it. Tortuga Tavern is a quick service restaurant that claims to be open seasonally, but really it's just not open a lot. Not that it's missed much when it's closed. When Tortuga does open, it serves up pretty standard theme park offerings like turkey legs and hot dogs. But recently we were surprised to find something on this menu that was actually a good find, the peanut butter chocolate hazelnut spread and banana sandwich for $9.99. This is typical X behavior. Just when you think they're irredeemable, they make you swoon with something they could have had all along. But let's be honest, you can make a peanut butter, Nutella, and banana sandwich at home and it's not gonna cost you $9.99. So there you go. Now because Tortuga Tavern has a rather shifty schedule, it's not a great idea to rely on them to be there for you when you're getting packaged in Adventureland. I wanna recommend the Adventureland Spring Roll Cart, but that snack location can be pretty unreliable with their operating hours too. They just have really good spring rolls and I keep running back to them whenever the opportunity strikes, even though they're getting too expensive. A more reliable counter service location is in Liberty Square at Sleepy Hollow Refreshments. They've even got a waffle offering you can pick up around breakfast that's similar to Tortuga's Hazelnut Sammy. The fresh fruit waffle sandwich at Sleepy Hollow is made with strawberries, bananas, blueberries, and chocolate hazelnut spread. And if you want a different type of waffle sandwich, they've also got a sweet and spicy chicken waffle sandwich that's served at lunch and later. It's real good. I'm also a major advocate for the New England vibes over at Columbia Harbor House, another quick service restaurant in the Liberty Square area. Liberty Square is always on a roll. There you'll find seafood and a lot of it. And one of our favorite seafood options here is the lobster roll made with chilled lobster and mayo within a New England style bun. There are also options to satisfy the picky eaters though. The trio platter serves up a combo of three different fried entrees, including fried shrimp, chicken strips, and battered fish. And hush puppies, can't forget the hush puppies. And there you have it, a bunch of not so great options for certain travel parties, but always a bunch of suggestions to try instead. Now, though these restaurants are definitely not always my favorites, I'm not counting any of them as lost causes. The team and I mosey our way back to these spots often just to see if anything's changed and if they're ready to blow our minds, because sometimes we will completely change our minds about restaurants. Some of our new favorite stomping grounds as of late have been thanks to menu overhauls and new offerings. So the moral of this story, don't write off any Disney restaurant as a lost cause because it might do a 180 and surprise you at any time. And I say this all the time, y'all. The chefs change all the time. The staff changes all the time. The menus change all the time. Disney restaurants are inconsistent. That's the only thing consistent about them. So it's like the weather in Orlando. If you don't like it right now, wait 10 minutes. So make sure to keep in touch and learn about our more recent reviews of the restaurants I listed for you today, just in case those tables turn. You can check out our website, DisneyFoodBlog.com, to keep up with our latest reviews and Disney reminders. And you can also pre-order the DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining 2022 from DFBStore.com. This 700 plus page guide is going to fill you in on more restaurants that we like, kind of like, could live without, and love more than air itself and everything else in between. If you find the guide isn't right for you, just contact me within 30 days of your purchase for a full refund. It's 100% guaranteed. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.